Before we consider moving tenths around, perhaps we should define what is a tenth. A tenth is a span of ten scale tones. C to a C is an octave, eight, nine, ten. A tenth is a third. Thirds could be major or minor. Likewise, a tenth can be major as well as minor. A walking tenth follows the same logic as a walking bass line. The difference between the two is that a bass line is comprised of single notes. Where a tenth is a two note configuration that throws off hints of moving harmony. Now if the harmony is diatonic, chords taken from the scale, the bass line would most likely stay true to the scale. Case of C, all the white notes. Likewise, a tenth is going to follow the same root. Great classic song that uses descending tenths. If I had, for example, a D7 chord in the key of C, well, that would have to be tonicization. That's a 5 of 5 in the key of C. D7 is a 5 of G7. And the F sharp definitely does not belong in the key of C. The bass line would probably take that into consideration when it got to that part. I'll give you an example here. do the same thing, probably better. Sounds like a little bit of a let it be. On occasion, you can have three notes in the span of a tenth. This to me looks like an A minor tenth. However, what if I wanted it to be an F tenth in a first inversion, F over A? Well, how is the listener going to know the difference between the two? So in that case, I would probably reluctantly have to put the root of the F chord in to give it that major flavor. The E on the A minor would not be necessary because the A and the C outline Likewise, if I had a walk-up but I wanted a dominant flavor, let's say the chord symbol called for an F7, well sure, put the F7 in there and then walk it up. Generally, a note in between a tenth kind of creates an interference factor and gets away from the free-flowing tenths. If I put a middle note down here, oh, it's just too cumbersome. I could get away with it up here. A tenth walk up is often used to bridge an up four chord movement. Example, a C to an F, a D to a G. Now it's a device used to create forward movement. Now God forbid that you're stuck in a horrible song that starts off perhaps on a C chord with a C melody and you're there for most of four beats before you move on to the F. I don't think you'd really like to listen to one, two, three, four, and if we use some moving tense, I think we can improve it a little bit. One, two. Now you've probably heard tense used in introductions. Let's pick one, uh, I don't know, key of F, something like uh, one and two and three and Hmm, 
maybe I should do a tutorial on introductions. Uh, don't mind me, I'm just thinking out loud. However, more often than not, they're used regularly through many songs you've heard. For example, Moon River. I'm sure you've heard it halfway through the first verse. song I just posted not too long ago, Baby Grand. Make it a little simplistic here so you can hear the moving tense. Great song by the composer. Michel Legrand, watch what happens. It's written in the key of E flat, but he actually starts in the key of G. And I'm gonna just pick it up at the end of the first verse when he is indeed in E flat. He gets to the second verse simply by walking up chromatically in tense. So listen for that, here we go. advice I can give to you is listen, listen, listen to well-crafted music. You'll find these tense movements everywhere. If you play, try to work them into your own arrangements since music publishers rarely will write them into the music score. Moving tense can fill in non-active areas and smooth out your arrangements. So as always, until next time, <laughs> bye for now.